Summer of 1999, Hell Creek, North Dakota. A 67 million year old hadrosaur is discovered. But this is not a typical dinosaur fossil of bones and teeth. Skin, tissue, and organs have been frozen in time. Scientists can't wait to take a closer look at this rare dino mummy. Touchdown. They haul the 10,000 pound specimen back to the lab and begin slowly chipping away. You're going down millimeter by millimeter, and we're trying to find the soft tissue before we go through the soft tissue. And so that's particularly challenging. This is when the, the X-ray vision comes in helpful. We need to know what's inside that's, yep, here. That's right. I think a CT scan would help us hugely with this specimen. Not just any CT scanner will do. They are off to the world's largest, a 1,300-mile journey. The Boeing company uses this massive X-ray source to detect flaws in space shuttle parts. It arrives without a hitch, but the challenges are just beginning. This is mm. far, by far the biggest and the heaviest piece that's ever been scanned. It's going to be a challenge. Unlike a scanner at a hospital where X-rays spin around a patient, in this CT scanner, which has to accommodate objects of all different sizes and shapes, the patient spins. The dino mummy is the largest patient to date, and at the moment, it is too large. That's fine. That's fine. This What's worse, even if the team does manage to squeeze it on, they aren't convinced that the 6 million electron volt X-ray source is powerful enough to penetrate and image the giant block. After days of difficult engineering, the crew finally squeezes the massive block onto the scanner. <laughs> Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. The concrete door shuts. The X-ray stream. And the mummy finally spins. As it turns, the machine takes millimeter thin X-rays of the rock from every angle, moving vertically up the block after each rotation. The slices are then stacked together like a digital deck of cards offering a three-dimensional cross-section of the patient. That's if the x-rays get through the thick rock. After a nail-biting wait, the first slice comes in. There's not enough x-rays going through it. It's just really dense. As the team tries blasting through the rock with more and more x-rays, what was initially meant to take a few days stretches to weeks and months, time afforded thanks to Boeing's goodwill. The massive CT scanner may be no match for the mummy's 8,000-pound body, but it easily slices through the smaller 2,000-pound tail, and results here don't disappoint. It's missing. Yeah, it, probably, it probably goes the other way. I think you're right. Oh, that's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> we have got the whole tail. Oh, that's good. Immediately obvious, the spacing of the dinosaur's vertebrae. This is the first time we've been able to actually quantify where the skin is relative to the bones. And you can actually zoom in and even start measuring the distances between each individual vertebrae to the next vertebra and the next. Most museum skeletons have these bones stacked tightly against each other. The soft tissue in the Dakota scans seem to indicate they should be set about a centimeter apart. Dinosaurs may be longer than we previously thought. You could stick a meter on every dinosaur in the world. <laughs> Imagine you'd stick a bit, At least. You'd stick a bit more on the big ones, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Even more exciting, the tail scan finally provides the muscle data these scientists so desperately need to get our hadrosaur up and running, a first in dinosaur locomotion. So we know this is skin here. And you can track it through to the skin envelope that's here. Enormous, isn't it? it? It's really deep. Look at the depth. I know. That's and that's where you've got your huge muscle group for the tails. It is muscles in the tail that power the hind legs and act as a dinosaur's main engine. The CT scan confirms Dakota's was more inflated than anyone ever expected.